thousand years ago, humanity was close to extinction. Our ancestors lived on every continent except the Americas. From Australia to Africa, they faced a climate much colder and more volatile than it is today. But it was in Europe that our forebears faced the worst living conditions. Vast ice sheets up to two miles thick were covering a third of the continent and spreading every day. It was the most extreme climate humans had ever endured. If they were to survive, they would have to abandon their traditional hunter-gatherer lifestyle and find a whole new way of living. They were well equipped for the challenge. Human ingenuity had evolved over thousands of generations, shaped by the struggle against the elements. <laughs> Human beings are unique. We are so versatile that we can deal with almost any challenge. What allows us to do this? Well, it's the force of a evolutionary background of adapting to environmental change. I think we're learning more and more that the motor of evolution isn't competition and biology and ecology, which is what Darwin thought. The motor of evolution is physics, it's climate, most of all, it's the ice. For two and a half million years, we have been living in an ice age. The ebb and flow of ice has dominated our climate, determined our evolution, and changed the way we live. One of nature's most destructive forces, ice, has helped make us who we are today. hills were once the northern edge of the known world. Beyond lay an empty frozen wasteland stretching all the way to the Arctic. This was as close to the ice as people dared go. in the area, trying to find food for their families. They've come this far north in search of reindeer, the best source of protein in a frozen climate. They've been successfully hunting in this territory for generations, but this year is different. The big herds haven't shown. Still, a single reindeer could feed them for a week. They don't understand why, but each year the weather is getting worse and the search for food becomes more desperate. Divi. Givi and the king had borrowed. Their 
families are back at camp, 20 miles further south. In evolutionary terms, these are modern humans. They can make clothes and shelters tough enough to withstand glacial temperatures. And like us, they speak a complex language, but their lifestyle is very different. They live in small clans of around 30 people, taking from the land what they need to survive. For the last five years, this clan has been led by its chief, Bran. He owes his status to his physical prowess. He is the strongest member of the group. The hunters return, their sleds almost empty. It's only October, but it's already winter. Without reindeer meat, the clan will struggle to survive the months ahead. Enga Gordiad, Burud Gordiad! Enga Lo, Dizotchu, Dizotchu, Enga da Salantad Valizid! They could abandon camp now and travel south in search of food. But to Bran, this seems a drastic move. Enga Pirvgen! Heading into the unknown, just as winter is closing in. Andy Duchikum Skymian. He decides they'll stay put and trust in the spirits to protect them. His faith is misplaced. The climate was being determined by physical forces beyond their control. Forces which had been unleashed way back in time, long before humans had ever set foot on the planet. Three million years previously, on the other side of the world, the shifting of continental plates created the Isthmus of Panama. Ocean currents could no longer flow between the Atlantic and Pacific. Warm tropical water was diverted north at the time, there was no ice at the North Pole. It was cold enough, but the air was too dry for snow to fall. But when warm, wet air from the tropics reached the Arctic, clouds started to form. Snow fell, and an ice sheet began to grow. None of this would have mattered to humans if the ice had stayed restricted to the North Pole. But it didn't. The Earth's orbit isn't stable. Over thousands of years, tiny wobbles change the amount of sunlight reaching the planet's surface. These wobbles made the northern ice sheets first grow and then melt back again. Since the Ice Age began two and a half million years ago, they have pulsed back and forth over 30 times. Twenty-four thousand years ago, the ice was advancing toward one of its high points, moving south into Europe at up to 60 feet a week. In the hills of southeast England, they're unaware of the ice sheets to the north. But as the temperature drops to 20 below, it becomes clear. Bronze's decision to stay was a mistake. When it's this cold, they should be eating 3,500 calories a day. They simply don't have the stockpiles of food. The stream, normally full of fish, has frozen solid.
they are so desperate that two men are sent out on a hunting mission in the middle of a snowstorm. Bran knows they are unlikely to return. By January, frostbite and hypothermia are taking their toll. People are starting to die. The dead can't be buried. The ground is too hard to dig a grave. of the children dies. His mother, Mara, can only grieve. Without children, the clan has no future. The people of Northern Europe are being wiped out by the climate. Two and a half million years, the Ice Age has played havoc with life on Earth. The idea that the ebb and flow of ice could change the course of evolution was first understood by Charles Darwin. In 1831, he came to these caves and discovered something extraordinary. And when Darwin was a boy, he used to say he had a hunger for the tropics. And strangely enough, he had the first experience of the tropics here in this rather dank cave in North Wales. What he found was something like this. It's a tooth and a pretty substantial one. Well, Darwin was a pretty good naturalist and he recognized straight away that in fact it was the tooth of a rhinoceros, which of course lived in Africa and not in Wales. What was it doing here? Well, most people had a very simple explanation. It had been drowned in Noah's flood and washed into this remote Welsh cave. Darwin had a different theory. What if the tooth hadn't come from Africa at all, but was from a rhino, indigenous to North Wales? His evidence was in the landscape. If rocks and mountains were capable of changing shape over time, perhaps animal life could do the same. And the agent for change was the ice. When Darwin came here to the heart of Snowdonia, he wrote in his diary that the clues about glaciation in this landscape were as clear as the ruins of a house consumed by fire. And that really was an astonishing change of view. The notion that this landscape wasn't static, it hadn't always been like this. Just a few thousand years earlier, it had been submerged under a thousand feet of ice. But clearly, if you'd been a rhino walking around in North Wales, and the climate changed, it changed very quickly. Really, you had no choice. You had to move, and I'm sure many of them did. They fled southwards, or you died. Faced with the ice, you could do nothing about it. If you look at the fossil record of all kinds of creatures, mammals, ourselves included, it's clear that for huge periods of time, hundreds of thousands of years sometimes, not much seems to happen. Uh, but then suddenly things begin to change. 